morning to everyone. Good and welcome to today's service. That's the, the second service in the month of November. It's the first chase. Today the fifth chase. The first service in the month of November. We welcome you to, to, to today's service. And all visitors, they should also feel welcomed. Today we are celebrating the best days of Mulokori Dwaba, Mulokosi Fefe, and Tracy Ramahuta are they here with us? And is there anyone who is putting the best days today? No one. And this week we will be celebrating the wedding anniversaries of Sahala and Mamel of Wangwa. They will be celebrating the, the 20 years in marriage on the 8th. And on the 10th, it will be William and Francis Halant who will be celebrating 50 years in marriage. I asked myself, when were they born? If they were celebrating 50 years in marriage, it means they were born. <laughs> I don't know. Their, their wedding is about to go for pension now. There's a plea from Olokwane Local and Communical Action Network, a sub branch of SACC, South African Council of Churches. They have reflected on the war that is happening and the war throughout the world at the moment, especially the war that is taking place at. at uh, Israel Palestine. So they are calling upon all the congregation all the congregations to dedicate a time of a prayer, whatever they pray, praying against the end of this war as we it's only as it is also affecting other Christians who reside in those countries. So there's a call that from the today which is the fifth of November until when that war which comes to an end, until when they come to peace, we we continue to pray for them whenever we pray. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, we come into your presence this morning. For Lord, you are the God of peace, God of unity. A God who doesn't rejoice when he sees his children fighting. We come to you, Lord, asking for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to move among your church and to move among your people. Those who are here and those who are far off. We remember your country, Lord, in Palestine and Israel, the war that is happening there, Lord. We ask for the Holy Spirit that it intervene for peace. And Lord, we dedicate today's service, Lord, into you, asking that, Lord, may the Holy Spirit lead us. We ask all this, Heavenly Father, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. The service shall continue as usual on page 104, but everything shall continue to be displayed on the overhead. And my sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And blessed be God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Yes. 
sit on me for the rest. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us for all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Garashites, Amorites, and then Jebusites. See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the will go into Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priest who carried the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth set foot in Jordan, its waters following downstream will be cut off and stand up, stand up a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the ark of the continent went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at the flood stage of is at the first stage, all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached Jordan and the feet touched the water's edge, the water from the ark streams stood up, stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap 
a great distance away at a town called Adam in the Venice city of Zarathustra. When the water flowing down of the sea of the upper Araba, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, so the people crossed over opposite of Jericho. The priest who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of Jordan and stood on the dry ground. While the Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing of the dry ground. Here's our reading. <laughs> The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 107, verses 1 to 7, and again from 33 to 37. I will read the old verses, and the congregation may respond with even verses. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His loving mercy is forever. And gather in from every land, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They were hungry and thirsty and their hearts fainted with, within them. He led them by the right path till they came to an inhabited city. Verse 33. He turns the rivers into desert and springs of water in the dusty ground. He turns the wilderness into a pool of water and past ground into flowing springs. They sow fields and plant vineyards which give them fruitful harvest. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Second
You may be seated. Once again, good morning to all of you. And here again, we meet again because you chose to come to church today. Unlike last week, last week we chose not to come to church. Maybe it was because of that we won rugby. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe people had different reasons. But thank you for choosing to come to church today. And today we meet under the theme, choose between the two. As I was reading the gospel, I felt, I, I thought, I felt as if the gospel had been written to discipline the clergy or the priest. In the gospel of Matthew, which I just read now, we heard Jesus disciplining or addressing the, the religious leaders of that time, and also, as I'm saying that, I felt as if he was also addressing me too. It means that of also the religious of today's world. And he addresses them and also addresses us to choose between the two type of people. He outlines that there are two types of people. There are those whom they are hypocrites and there are those whom they are a true disciples. Hypocrites. Hypocrites are those who live a double life that Jesus is telling us today. Hypocrites, we found that mostly mainly in the New Testament, in the, in the Gospels, Children. 
The religious, the religious leaders which Jesus addressed are experts in the law and tradition. As I said, they are acad academically on point. As we heard, whenever they go, they wear long robes. I'm not saying that I'm related because I wear long robes, no. Whenever they go, they wear long robes and we are told that they move around with crowds. Whenever they move, they want to be worshipped and they want to be heard. However, the things that they said, things which come from their mouths, they are not aligned with their action. They live a different life. They live, they live what we today term a down life, where they do as, where they say, do as I, as I say, but I don't do as I do. Perhaps, allow me to say that they live life with some of us who wear this white plastic, which we call a dog collar around our neck, pretend to live. They live a life of false. They live a life where we every time we stand in front of you and say, live this way, but I am the first one who live a different life when I go out. They live a life that say, Christians, let us pledge, let us give time to God, let us participate in church activities, but I am the one who don't practice it. That's the life of the hypocrites. They live a life where each and every day when we stand in public, we preach against women's abuse and children abuse. But certainly, this was, I think it was this week, where I read about a priest, which I won't mention from which denomination, who beat his wife until she dies. That's a life of hypocrites. We had a woman, women, who act as if they are holy people on Sunday or in public. Yet in their homes, they are monsters which their husband and wife they are afraid of. That's the life of hypocrites. We have parents whom outside they are regarded as Good parents, but the, when they go home, they are monsters to their children. And we have children whom community, whom in church, we know them as a good children, but outside they know them as a good young minister. And we have people whom inside them, they had to pretend and put a smile, a smile in their face because they don't want people to see them that they are going through a lot. Perhaps when that mask in front of your face, on your face, is a sign of being hypocrites. Why don't you leave out who you are if you are sad? Why don't you want people to see that you are sad? Perhaps that's when someone will come and comfort, and, and comfort you and assist you to find a solution. It's all about choosing. We can choose to live a life of hypocrites or a life of disciples. So, whenever you listen, you hear a word being preached in the synagogues or in public, Jesus tells it to us that listen to them and listen to those good news, but don't practice what the preachers of the news do.
And those who are of true disciples, we see them by not seeking titles whenever they go. We see them by not demanding positions whenever they go. We see them by taking a back seat and observe and their advice. But we are told that as we do that, as we observe and as we advise, we need to serve. Serve other people with a sincere heart. Motivated by love, the love that I preached about last week. For God loved us. So we are called that if God is about love and if God loves us and gives us whatever that we need, we are called to go out the world and save it and save the world. And say, as we save the world, it means that we'll be saving each other. Do so without looking for anything in return. Do so without looking for a name to be praised. Do so with a sincere heart. In a world that is, in a world that demands us, that demands for us to always be making decisions where it is always simpler to praise the world and choose eternal life. Always choose not to be hypocrites. Always choose, that's my advice, to be humble and humility. Choose always to be a true disciple, even in a tough situation. Choose to be a true disciple. God gives us a difficult choice to make this morning. And I want you to, I invite you to examine your life. Study your life and look among the life in your life. And the life that you've been living. That, and ask yourself this question. This, and if you call your name out, that, which life are you, are you living at the moment? Are you living a life as a true disciple or are you living a life of hypocrites? And if you found that you've been living a life that portrays a hypocrite, I'll invite you to stop where you are and make a 360 degree turn and choose a life of servitude and choose a life that resembles who God is, the God in you and the God among you and the God beyond you. And as you and I are about to make a decision, and as me, you and I, we're about to, about to make a study of, as we're about to study our life, I want you this morning, to choose to be a true disciple of God. But if you still find that it's not easy to choose, I'm available. As someone who can come and talk to you, maybe we'll find a solution for your problem. The choice is with you that you make a right decision. You chose to live a life of good disciple and let go a life of hypocrites, a life that always demands you to have a status in the community. Chose to serve than to be saved. Amen. Please sit on me for the praise.
Let us pray. As we celebrate the Holy Eucharist to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for his mercies, let us pray for his church in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in his name. We pray for your church throughout the world, and especially for this diocese, and for Luke, our bishop, together with Tara Metropolitan. Give your church power to proclaim the gospel of Christ, and grant that we and all Christian people may be united in truth. Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you, Father, for the resources of the world and its beauty. We give thanks for the refreshing rains received this week. In a time of silence, offer up your own thanksgivings in this regard. Give to all a reverence for your creation and make us worthy stewards of your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world, especially all the troubled spots, and for our country and its leaders. In a time of silence, please offer your own prayers in this regard. Give wisdom to those in authority, direct this and every nation, in the way of justice and peace, that all may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. In a time of silence, please pray for your friends and family members with special claims upon us. to all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, <coughs> Again in a time of silence, please pray for your friends and family members who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. To all who suffer, give courage, healing and a steadfast trust in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Silence. Let us give thanks for our friends and family members who have gone before us. to your promises. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We bless and praise you for all your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord, for the patriarchs, prophets, apostles and martyrs. And we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. 
Lord, in your mercy. Together we say, Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
Our series continues on page 104 in our prayer books. Everything shall continue with the today and the overheads. I'll invite that we join together. I'll invite that we join together as we pray together the paragraph 48. Together we pray. Source of life. The heaven and earth are yours. Yet you have given us the million of things. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. And Sunday school will be learning about Prophet Elijah, Messiah, and Jonah. This prophet has taught us about faithfulness, the fear of the Lord, obedience, perseverance, and hope. Here's a Bible verse about faithfulness. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make the ruler over many things. Enter the kingdom of God with joy. We should always have faith in the Lord as he knows what's best for us in the his world. Monday Church. Um, we bow our heads for the night. Gracious God, we pray for all people suffering, suffering from war in Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, and other parts of the world. Transform the hearts and minds of those who perpetrate violence and oppression on children, mothers, medical personnel, and elders as it is in Gaza and Ukraine and other parts of the world. Grant wisdom to the world, to world leaders, and advancing efforts towards world peace. May they not be compromised by self interest and blind indifferences. Bring peace to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, my. 
Minister Nathanach. Let me take this time to thank you all for choosing to come to church. And as you leave, please go and make a right decision about yourself. Choose between between the life, living the life of hypocrisy and the life of true disciples, which resembles who you are and the calling that God has called you from that name to light. Church Wardens will say all the other things. Do we have any visitors among us? Anyone who is a visitor? Thank you. Just tell us who you are and where you come from. Hello, Mrs. Chiki. I'm from Benin. I didn't get your name. Yeah, as you see, when we bring in the collection box in front here, today is the first Sunday of the, of the month. As we customary every first Sunday of the month, we've got a special collection, which is the money that we, the church needs this currently. And we'll do this immediately after my announcements. Uh, all the announcements are in the pew leaflet. I'm sure they've been sent to you electronically, but there are a few that I need to emphasize. One, that next week there is a combined service. As we are going to have verse 3, this verse 3 is about the finance of the churches. Now, in the finance of the church, we get to be talking to your uh, income and expenditure for 2023 as well as approving budget for 2024. We urge all of you to be in church on Sunday to be able to make decisions about your, your finances. And on the weekend of the 9th and the 18th, 18th and 19th, sorry, which is week after next, there's another big one. This one, there will be another combined service because the church the cathedral will be hosting the AMF. The AMF conference will be held here from the 18th to the 19th. And the AMF is planning to hold a, a procession from the library garden to near the church. And they're, they're appealing to all the guilds to romp in order to, to make the procession a very, very nice one. There is also, there were supposed to be confirmations that was announced right to the end that was to take place on the 26th of November. Unfortunately, the bishop is having other commitment and the archbishop has asked the, our bishop to be doing other provincial works so the, the bishop will not be available. As a result, the confirmation is moved to the 2nd of December. And the congregation who wishes to join the girls. We've got various girls in the, in, in, in the church. The other one is like, if you want to dress like me, we are the MF. Your contact person is Lisiba Gekana. 
the AWF, our contact person is uh, Ms. Kabor Nibrava. And for Mother's Union, St. Agnes, St. Mary, St. Bennett Museki, your contact person is Suflario Bamahari and Delin Mawaro. And their numbers are also on the public flat. We currently concluded the golf day. People must be worried now to say, what happened? Where is the money? Well, how did the golf course go? Golf day is one of our church funding fundraising event. Well, that we've concluded that. On top of that, we've got also a Maasai fundraising day, which we hold at Maasai Lodge every year. The finances or the report for those two events will be tabled here next week. Please be present so that you know, how, so that we can thank you properly for having participated. Our other important fundraising activity in the church is Puno. Uh, Puno loosely translated means harvest. Um, we've been plowing the whole year, we've been harvesting the whole year. We're asking this time of the year, please give the portion of the harvest to the Lord by way of contributing to Puno. The adults in the church are expected to contribute 1,400 adults and 300 rent for children. The Puno last year raised just over 170,000. Am I right, Mayor We raised over 170,000 last year. The budget for the target for this year is 180k, 180,000. And uh, we are not doing well so far. It's because we started announcing late, and I'm sure all of us will come, will come to the party. Lastly, um, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Have a blessed Sunday. Please now have a chorus as people can come and uh, put in their Sunday collections. I mean, the special collections. Thank you. I'll leave my job. Chorus. <laughs>
and Lord, from what you have blessed us with last month in general, Lord, we took this portion, Lord, to bring back to you to say that, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Multiply it, Lord, that, Lord, it may be used for your church and also for those who are less privileged. Lord God, bless all those who have brought this gift, even those, Lord, who wishes to come and bring a gift to you, perhaps, in the moment they have anything tangible that they can bring. Bless them too, Lord. We ask all these heavenly Father, as for the God who gave us everything at the due season. Our one God who is attentive now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as we stand on the intro here, we continue to wish those who are writing the exam all the best with their exams, especially will bring to our attention the main those who are like the main of the English chat, the English is right now. Meticulous. So we continue to wish them all the best too as they are writing their events. Let us continue to keep them in our prayers and don't forget to check up on them because in the silence of their hearts or whatever when they close their, themselves in the room, sometimes you might think that they are studying whereas they are facing depression. So parents continue to keep, good parents and good parents, yes, continue to keep them in your prayers and also check up on them. Thank you. Please let us thank you for the decision.
kan kumbit sih tu tu kan kita lawannya rap macam kalau dia cuci dia cuci aku rasa tu ya way tu kumbit sih dia ni mobil aku bawa tu Oh. Uh-huh. 